We are honored to have with us this afternoon Mr. Lawrence Zacharies, Vice President for Enterprise Risk Management and Chief Security Officer at Stony Brook University. Mr. Zacharies is a 1993 graduate of Sage and North, a 2019 Sage and Hall of Honor inductee and expert in leadership. With nearly 30 years of experience overseeing and managing multiple law enforcement, emergency management, emergency medical services, and public safety organizations, he also provides strategic guidance on environmental health and public safety. We are privileged to have him address our students and guests today. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Lawrence Zacharis. Good evening, Dr. Pelletieri, members of the Board of Education, Mr. Larson, assistant principals, administrative staff, faculty, distinguished guests, families, friends, and most importantly, Sachem North class of 2022 graduates. My name is Larry Zacharies and I am a proud alum of the class of 1993 and it is truly a distinct honor to be able to say a few words this evening. In truth, they will be more than just a few words, but I will channel my inner Dr. Pelletier and follow the advice of one of our great U.S. presidents, Franklin Roosevelt. On the topic of speeches, he famously said, be sincere, be brief, and be seated. Today's speech may be a bit unorthodox. My friends and family certainly know that I have a habit of being so. But I will disclaim that this speech is about you, our graduates. Yes, I will be telling some tales of how I got here and some lessons that I learned along the way, imparting a few nuggets of wisdom that hopefully stick with you after today. But this day, this celebration of your accomplishments, it is just that. It is about you. Not every person that graces the podium, most often some of our elected officials, follows that rule, but I certainly will do so. Therefore, you will not hear the beginning of the story and me choosing the girl. Or the end of the story, how there was no scholarship, no trip around the world, and no girl. And if you missed the joke after the ceremony, just Google John Oliver endless graduation speech time loop and I promise you, you won't be disappointed. This is the part of our program where we require some audience participation, so please bear with me, but let's start off the recognition the right way. So please rise as you are able to do so, as I acknowledge things that represent you. So if you're attending an Ivy League school in September, please stand. Anyone attending a military service academy who are enlisted, oh, keep standing, this is going to get great. Keep standing. <laughs> military service academies who are enlisted in the military, please stand and be recognized. <laughs> How about those going to play Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three athletics somewhere here, anywhere across the nation? <laughs> How about those going to trade school, entering an apprenticeship program, please stand. Those headed to community college, those taking over the family business or brave enough to start your own as entrepreneurs, who's headed directly into the workforce, who's going to other two or four year universities anywhere in this country or elsewhere. And what about those taking a gap year, not sure what you want to do or have a single idea what you have planned after the grad party later today, please stand. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating your class of 2022. Don't sit down yet, because there's no way I'm gonna miss this opportunity for the grant. Now it's your turn, graduates. Before you all sit, Please acknowledge every single one of the people seated out there that helped change your diapers, clothe you, feed you, provide for you, wiped your tears, hugged you when you needed it, scolded you when you stepped out of line, and played the single biggest part in getting you where you are today. Join me in a round of applause for your faithful family and friends. All right, now you get to sit. 10,591. 10,591 is how many days have elapsed since I last stood at this podium 
on that hill at a similar size, although slightly smaller crowd, as president of Sachem's graduating class in 1993. 29 years. A decade or so more than our graduates have been alive, the lifetimes of ups and downs and in-betweens have gotten me to this moment. But how did I get here? Well, that requires a tale or two, and we need to go back to 1989 when that building across the field was known as Sachem South, and I was a freshman in Mr. Sabalos' English class. Mr. Sabalos was one of the most influential teachers I had during my time at Sachem and frankly throughout my entire life because of the impact he made back then in ninth grade honors English. You see, Mr. Sabalos believed that English was not just about literature, grammar, the Iliad, the Odyssey, or Shakespeare. He believed truly that English was the study of all things. On Fridays, we would take a day off of whatever the topic we were studying and he would teach a lesson on a random thing, how to make beer, how to repair a small engine, any random piece of information that he could pass on to the eager class was always the highlight of the week. He was a Renaissance man, so interesting and unique, and partly mysterious, complete with the Ernest Hemingway beard he quickly became and remained one of my favorite teachers. On exams, he believed that you should get credit for your knowledge. Road strict parameter exams were not his thing. Rather, you would get one point for every fact or point or issue that you could recall. This meant that you can get 147 on your exam, or a 15. As a young student, this was fascinating to me, and I always wanted to make a good impression. Near the end of the year, we had to write a term paper, and I really wanted to impress him. My sister, who was four years my senior at Sachem North, was reading Albert Camus and studying existentialism at the time, and I thought, what better way to impress him than to write a paper on topics that were four years ahead of what we were studying. I was, and in some ways still am, a bit of a procrastinator. I delayed. I waited, taking my mantra of being able to work better under pressure. I didn't read the book fully, and frankly didn't grasp the topic at all. But I cobbled the paper together in the final days before the deadline, complete with a lot of fluff and inconsistencies, and submitted it. The grade that I received is not important, and in reality was overly generous. But the message he wrote on the front cover was the true lesson and I still have the paper today. Larry, you have a rather disappointing habit of trying to make it on your personality rather than your intellect. I do not doubt that there are teachers that would be charmed by this paper. I find it kind of juvenile and contrived, sort of what a philosophical poser would do. Brief historical side note. Poser is a lost phrase from the 80s defined as someone that is a faker, not real, like someone who was a skater, but not really a skater, was a poser, it and other phrases like it, mint, minted, radical, audacious, veg out, are gone into oblivion and have been replaced by terms that I'm sure you all know and four of my kids, one of whom is sitting over there, know better like it slaps, this steak is fire, drippy, vibe check, extra, all those things. But in 1989, to be called a poser, especially by your English teacher, was especially a big blow to my ego. But he continued on. Many of your statements do not make sense, and I suspect they are copied down with little understanding of what they really mean. The millionaire's life and his money and success mean nothing to an existentialist. The only meaning to life is life itself, and you do nothing with it except live it. If you think success in the Air Force Academy will make you happy, that's fine, but it will not make you any better than any happy aborigine in the Australian outback. What was wrong? What happened? Well, 15-year-old Larry didn't know at the time, but the problem was that I was in love with the idea of writing a paper about existentialism, not in love with the work and dedication needed to accomplish it. I tried to BS a guy that was one of the smartest that I ever met, one that I deeply respected, and he called me on it. I want you to remember, if you forget everything else I say today, and whatever you do, wherever you go, you have to have passion. Sustaining passion. You have to believe in it. The reasons you start are often the ones that keep you going and help you finish. And without sustaining passion, you will most assuredly, eventually, fail at whatever you do. Fast forward to a few years later when I was in this building as a graduating senior. 
At the time, as foreshadowed by my ninth grade paper, my dream was to attend the U.S. Air Force Academy and fly F-16s. Sachem started a new program. Half the day for the first four periods, there was in school an in-school aviation training program. Mr. Kalaramakis, or Mr. K, as everyone referred to him, was the instructor. He was one of the coolest teachers around, well-dressed, well-liked, and had a great rapport with everyone. He was a private pilot and a willing subject of the inaugural program, which included in-class simulator training, FAA ground school, and actual flying planes on the weekends, a true first-of-its-kind program at the time. The class was enjoyable and occupied literally half of my schedule for the in end of my senior year, but much like Mr. Sabalas, Mr. K was teaching much more than the fundamentals of flying. He was giving career advice, relationship advice, of which I needed a lot at the time, and generally, preparing us to enter the world as young adults. His famous saying, one that he repeated over and over and over again, like an untrained but genuine motivational speaker and influencer before there was such a thing. Larry, what you think about all day long is what you become. I can hear the words and see his facial expression and body language as I stand here today. He believed it. He truly believed it, and he made you believe it. Such a powerful, positive, lasting influence for young men and women. What was the lesson? Perseverance. You will be tested. You will be tested by yourself. You will be tested by others, by outside influences, by life circumstances, next month, next year, and for the rest of your days, you need to remember who you are, what you want, and dedicate yourself to getting there, no matter what, despite setbacks, twists, and turns. Two steps forward, one step back, is still one step forward. How am I standing before you today? Passion, perseverance. No, I am not an Air Force pilot. I did not attend the U.S. Air Force Academy. My story after high school includes a brief stint at Dowling College, which is no longer there and sits as an abandoned property in Oakdale. Enrolled in the Aviation Management and Flight School, a choice I made over Embry-Riddle Autonautical University and moving away to a tropical paradise in Daytona Beach. I was a volunteer firefighter in the time at the Holbrook Fire Department and did not want to give that up. That decision led to becoming an EMT and then, surprising many and much to the dismay of my parents, dropping out of Dowling and enrolling in the paramedic program at Stony Brook. Ten months later, I embarked on a journey in commitment of service and healthcare, working full-time both at Jamaica Hospital and Stony Brook. Three years later, I would leave Stony Brook and join the New York City Police Department, where I threw myself into learning every facet of law enforcement. I returned to school, transferred three more times between Stony Brook, Suffolk Community College, Nassau Community College, and ultimately found my way to the John Jay College of Criminal Justice. I started, stopped, started, stopped, started and stopped some more, alternating between attending one semester, taking one semester off to pay off my credit card where my tuition was, mom and dad's arrangement was help for four years of school, not an adulthood of indecision and inconsistent attendance. It would take me nine years to earn my bachelor's degree, but then I never stopped, continuing on for my master's, two postgraduate certificates. I got married along the way, started a family, started a business, landed the biggest contract of my life with the largest construction company in the world, only to have that very same contract take down my business, plunge me $150,000 into debt, and test the strengths of my marriage, my sanity, and my fortitude. I worked and at one point six jobs to pay the bills and still to this day I remember my wife and I nervously watching our checking account reach 11 cents. 11 cents in six days including a weekend until the next paycheck would be coming. On we pushed, kids grew, the chance for me to return at Stony Brook in 2009 as the director of emergency management presented itself and it was an opportunity too good to pass on and I very unexpectedly and quite reluctantly left the NYPD to be closer to home and to increase the quality of life for my family. I also would have had a shorter commute because I decided it would be a good day to go back to law school, which I had been accepted to, and it was easier to coordinate with work. Four years part-time at night, and by the way, don't ever let anyone tell you that law school is part-time, while working during the day and on weekends, attending the FBI National Academy and actually commuting from Quantico, Virginia to Central Iceland. I graduated, passed the bar, and opened my own practice. My Stonybrook career progressed. I took on additional responsibility year after year, and then, of course, all of our lives were turned upside down in early 2020 with COVID. 
For me, it was the moment I was waiting for, the one I had prepared all my life for with training, experience, and formal education. And as my wife says, it only took 11 years in a global pandemic, but man, they showed to appreciate me now. I wound up being promoted a few times. Those are all the parents of people that I went to high school with, by the way, who emailed me and text messaged me. I really feel the 30 years since I've been here. I wound up being promoted a few times, and a year ago reached the pinnacle of my career for my current position, where my team and I are responsible for the safety, security, and well-being of 50,000 people at Stony Brook. How am I standing before you today? Passion, perseverance, absolutely. That all began on these grounds and in these buildings all those years ago, and a decade before that in the halls of Grundy Avenue Elementary. I have Sachem to thank for building that foundation, for honing the skills necessary to make the tough decisions, sometimes rightly and sometimes not, and for creating the man that is humbled by the picture that hangs in the Sachem Hall of Honor and so blessed to be able to deliver these words today. Sachem Class of 2022, congratulations, good luck, God bless. Persevere passionately today, tomorrow, next week, next year, and forever.